down almost level to the ground but the law did what he said he would do he made a way he made a way oh ho oh, ho oh, yeah oh yeah honor to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to my pastor, Pastor G. Wayne Parker, to all my brothers and sisters in the ministry, to the deacons, the mothers, to family and friends and all saints. I thank God for being here this morning before you. I thank God for another opportunity that he has given me to share the word with you. I ask that you will bow in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day. God, I thank you for another opportunity to come before your people. God, I ask that you would hide me behind the shadows of your wings and when I open my mouth and speak, God, you will speak through me. God, I ask right now that you bind up every demonic and hindering spirit that shall try to rise up today. God, I ask that you will loose your guardian and your warring angels. God, I ask that you would touch ears, unstop their ears, Lord. Touch their hearts and regulate minds this morning. And God, I ask that the word would be planted deeply within them. In Jesus' name, I pray and give thanks. Amen. I ask that you would open up your Bibles to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 8, verses 1 through 4. And if I would choose for a subject, it would be never forget. Never forget your Egypt. Chapter 8 reads, All the commandments which I give thee this day shall ye observe to do, that you may live and multiply 
and go in and possess the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers. And thou shalt remember all the way of the Lord thy God. Led thee these forty years in the wilderness to humble thee and to prove thee and to know what was in thine heart, whether thou wouldest keep his commandments or no. And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and fed thee with manna, which thou knowest not, neither did thy fathers know, that he might make thee know that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. Thy raiment waxed not old upon thee, and neither did thy foot swell in thee forty years. So as we look back over this past year in 2020 to this day, we can't help but praise and thank God for all he has done. This past year, the virus, COVID-19, has caused us to reflect more on the goodness of the Lord and his promises. Even with the loss of 400,000 lives throughout the United States, Due to this virus, companies have closed down, jobs have been lost, many in food lines to feed themselves and their families for the first time. Racism has been running rampant and the government party has been divided. But God's promises remain true. Malachi 3 and 6 says, For I am the Lord, I change not. God is the same today as he was yesterday. Jeremiah 29 and 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. And Isaiah 41 and 13 says, I am the Lord your God who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, Do not fear. I will help you. People of God, Trials and tribulations are not something that is new. The same as it was yesterday, so it is today. John 16 and 33 says, These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good courage. I have overcome the world. There are no sufferings on this earth that can be compared to the sufferings of our Lord and Savior. Nothing and no one can do what Jesus has done for you and I. This is why this morning, if you have breath in your body, if you have activities of your limbs, if you were able to dress yourself, you ought to be praising and thanking God. You see, this morning, what I be, want to share with you is the parallel between Moses' instructions to the Israelites and God's words to us in 2021. Here in the book of Deuteronomy, we find Moses giving last instruction, orders to the new generation of Israelites as they were about to go into the promised land. These are the instructions that Moses gave to the Israelites. Be careful to follow every commandment I am giving you so that you may live and increase and enter and possess the land of God promised in oath to your ancestors. Moses told them to stay obedient and remember the past. Remember God and to keep a holy fear of the Lord. Don't forget how God humbled and tested you so that you would, he would know what was in your heart. First Samuel 16 and two says, for man looks at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. Moses told the Israelites to remember how God led you in the wilderness and brought you out. In other words, he took the time to tell them to look back. Remember all the ways the Lord led you these 40 years through the wilderness. But God had a purpose. He had to humble and test the Israelites to know what was in their heart. But Moses says, remember when you were hungry, God fed you. 
with manna that only your ancestors had not known? Remember when you were thirsty, he provided you with water? Remember your clothes and your shoes never even wore out and your feet didn't swell? Then he told them, observe the commandments and walk in obedience. Moses challenged the Israelites to obey the Lord, reject idolatry, keep your daughters from intermarrying and your sons. Why? Because Moses knew that God was bringing them into a land, a good land filled with brooks and streams, a land of wheat and barley, vines and fig trees, pomegranates, olive oil and honey, a land where bread would not be scarce and they would lack nothing. And after you have eaten and, and satisfied, be careful, be very careful not to forget, failing to observe the laws and decrees that I'm giving you this day. Don't forget it was God who brought you through that wilderness and kept you safe from all types of scorpions and venomous snakes. I gave you water when they was done, and he led you with, fed you with manna that your fathers knew not. Moses says, failure to not remember can cause you to begin to think that it was your own strength, your own might, your own educational achievements, your own financial status, you can begin to become prideful and haughty and think that it was you that did all these things and not God. But I wanna pause right here for a moment. I want to let you ponder a thought. Remember how it was when you were in your Egypt. You see, everybody has an Egypt. It's the place when darkness was all around us, that unsaved place where Satan was running our lives. He was tossing us to and fro. But one day, God heard our cries. Then he reached down, picked us up, and brought us out of darkness. He brought us out of our wilderness, and he set our feet on solid ground. He clothed us with a robe of righteousness. It was God who fed us and kept us and prospered us. Then as so it is now, he began to test us. He wanted to see also if we would follow his instructions. You see, only God could have done such a marvelous thing. It was El Shaddai, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Rapha. As, and so it is this day in 2021, God is still blessing us. God has made a way for each of us to keep food in our refrigerators, meals on our tables, a roof over our head, running water in our faucets, heat in our buildings and clothes on our backs. God sent his spirit down to even show us how to pray and speak health and healing to our old bodies. People of God, our Lord and Savior has placed a hedge of protection around us and blessed us. Isaiah 54 and 17 says, No weapon formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise up against you in judge judgment thou shalt condemn. So when the storms of life are raging, there is a hiding place. Psalm 91 says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, and Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the flower and from the noise and pestilence. He shall cover thee with His wings his feathers, and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasted at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right 
hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation, there shall no evil before befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. And so it is, saints. We come to the place where you say, well, preacher, what about that difficult time we having right now with the pandemic and all the loss that we've suffered? Well, I want to pause for a moment and reflect on some times in our lives when things weren't so good. I think in order for us to understand the goodness of the Lord, we must remember the road that each of us have traveled to get here this morning. I want you to begin when God brought you out of your Egypt up until this very hour. I don't know your circumstances and I can't measure your crimes, but this I do know, I don't have to look too far back. You see in October of 2020, my sight began to dim. My sight began to dim, saints. I had migraine headaches. Even the very light hurt. Doctors weren't sure what was going on. But God, I knew that God was a healer. Late in the midnight hour, I asked God, please heal my sight and allow me to continue to work for you. I knew God had a plan, so he sent me to doctor, one doctor. And then he sent me to the second doctor who confirmed the first doctor. And so it was in January of 2021, I had laser performed on both eyes, but I still hear God saying to me, trust me, my child. But through all of this, I had to remember my Egypt. I had to remember my wilderness and the many times in my life where he led me through dangers seen and unseen. Jeremiah 32 and 27 says, I am the Lord, the God of all mankind. Is anything too hard for me? Saints, just take a moment and remember your difficult times. But don't give too much credence to that difficult time. I want you to begin to focus on praising and thanking God for the deliverance. It was God who brought you out. It was God who restored your health. It was God who gave you another chance when man said no. It was God that says to the devil, not now. They still have more work to do. Psalm 23 says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He leadeth me beside the still water. He restoreth my soul. He lead me in the path of righteousness. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. You see, God is a protector. God is a protector. Saints, when difficult times come up in your life, a spirit of thanksgiving will swell up in your spirit and cause you to remember that God is still in control. Thanksgiving and praise will open up the heavens and pour you out a blessing that no man can stop. It is God who causes the sun to rise and the moon to set. It is God whose hand of mercy holds the stars in place. When we thank God for who he is, and what he has done in our life, God tells the devil, not my child. You see, the key to backing up the enemy is to open up your mouth and start praising and thanking God. You can't be hurt and thankful at the same time. You can't be negative and positive in the same sentence. Remember our example. Jesus is our example. My Bible tells me in 1 Corinthians 11 and 24 is when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do, do this in remembrance of me. 
In the same manner also, he took the cup and said, this is the blood which is shed for you. Jesus, our example, in the most difficult time of his earthly life, took the time to give an example of how to live in this world filled with adversity. So I ask you this morning, what excuse do you have not to listen to God? What excuse do you have not to be obedient and give thanks in the midst of a trying time? But before I take my seat, I want you to remember these things. Never forget how God saved you from the hands of the enemy and led you through your personal wilderness to this very day. I want you to remember all the commandments that Moses gave to the people as they were going into the promised land. Then I want you to remember these promises of God. He said, I will be with you in Deuteronomy 31 and 8. I will protect you in Psalm 91. I will provide for you in Jeremiah 29 and 11. I will be your strength when you're weak in Psalm 46. I will be your peace that passes all understanding in John 16 and 33. And remember, I will always love you. John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believing on him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. <laughs>